and welcome to today's Nutrition with Context webinar. My name is Justine Shriki, a McGill dietetics student, and today we'll focus on peanut butter. So to get into the uh, presentation outline, I'll begin by discussing what peanuts are, how they're grown, um, whether or not they're sustainable, what the benefits of peanut butter are, and then I'll get into a recipe demo, uh, a recipe demo highlighting peanut butter energy balls, um, and I'll finish off with some more ways to add peanut butter into your diet. So let's start off with what peanuts are. Despite the name, they're actually a legume and not a type of nut. So instead of being related to nuts like uh, almonds or cashews, they're actually relatives to beans, lentils, soy, and other legumes. They're native to South America, and you might have also heard them being called ground nuts, earth nuts, or even goobers. When we talk about peanut butter, it means that it's a spread made from at least 90% ground peanuts, with the other 10% being additives like salt, sugar, and extra fats. Anything less than this, 90%, uh, is actually called a peanut spread. When it comes to growing peanuts, of course they need to be planted into the soil. So the farmer prepares the soil and then plants the seeds in, in rows. And then they're left to grow for 140 to 150 frost-free days. In order to get a visual of the actual growing process, here we have our uh, peanut plant. And after 40 days, um, the flower starts to appear and grow, and it grows above ground. After it uh, gets pollinated by insects like bees, um, the flower goes through a process called pegging. And this means that the stem actually grows downwards. We can see these little stems here. They grow downwards towards the ground and they breach the soil so that the peanut pods can mature in the ground. And each plant produces around 40 peanut pods that will then be harvested by our fa your farmers um, when they wait for the perfect conditions, meaning that the soil is not too wet or not too dry. Um, and then they drive a tractor called a digger along the rows of the plants. The digger pulls the plants from the soil, shakes off any excess, and then lays them back down into what is called windrows. So windrows are rows of these harvested plants where they're basically flipped so that the peanuts, uh, the peanut pods face the sky and then the leaves and the vines face the, uh, face the ground. They're left here for two to three days in order to cure or to dry. And then the peanuts are uh, separated from the vines and shipped off to manufacturers. In terms of where peanuts are grown, they're grown best in warm climates, and India and China actually produce over 50% of the world's supply. The United States also grows a significant amount with nearly 10% of the world's supply. And unfortunately, uh, Canada's climate isn't as suitable for growing peanuts, but peanut Peanuts and peanut butter um, are quite a staple in Canadian households, so we import them from the United States, these products from the United States, and we're actually their single largest country importer. Other countries that grow, um, uh, that grow peanuts include various countries from Africa and South America. Looking at the different types of peanuts, there are actually four different types that are grown around the world. There's the runner, which contributes to 80% of the peanuts grown in the United States. Um, they're uniform in size, making them really good for roasting, and roasting is important for making peanut butter. So this is why they're mainly used for this process. There's also Virginia peanuts, which are the, have the largest kernels out of all four varieties. And uh, just a fun fact, if you've ever ordered peanuts at a baseball game, for example, these are likely the ones that you, you had bought um, because Virginia peanuts are often sold for snacking purposes. Then we have our Spanish peanuts, and these are smaller, have smaller kernels um, with distinctive red skins. So they're usually used in making candies, um, as well as like added to chocolate bars, but um, they're also found as the organic peanuts that are sold in stores. Lastly, we have Valencia peanuts, and these peanuts have uh, three or more kernels per shell. They're also used for making natural peanut butter. 
Um, and Valencia peanuts are ideal for boiling if that's what your recipe calls for. In terms of how peanut butter is actually made, of course the peanuts have to be prepared. So after they're harvested and shipped to the manufacturer, they're shelled, and then the raw peanuts are roasted, cooled, and blanched. Blanched meaning that the skins are removed. The peanuts are then sorted either by hand or using a machine in order to make sure that only good peanuts are going into the peanut butter. The next step, of course, is grinding. Uh, grinding the peanuts so that we can make that spread that we all know and love. So the peanuts are heated and ground with emulsifiers added during this process. Uh, and the emulsifiers help make sure that any of the natural oils that separate from the peanuts um, get, stays in, in the peanut butter and stays incorporated. The peanut butter is then rapidly cooled in order for the emulsifier to set in the peanut butter. And if the manufacturer is making a chunky peanut butter, they add some crushed, uh, crushed peanuts. Finally, the peanut butter is packaged and then shipped off for store, uh, to stores for us to purchase. So this leads us to our next section regarding sustainability. And peanuts are definitely sustainable. So to begin, they're actually a nitrogen fixing crop, which means that they pull nitrogen from the air and bring it into the soil to replenish any of the nitrogen that's lost in, um, in, while the plant is growing. This also makes it so that peanut crops need less fertilizer because a really large component of fertilizers is nitrogen. When it comes to manufacturing nitrogen-based fertilizers, they actually, this, act, this process produces a substantial amount of greenhouse gases. So not having to produce, uh, not having to um, use these, uh, this fertilizer or use it in, in smaller amounts actually reduces the carbon footprint of this crop. Alongside this, um, the peanut crop needs uh, quite a small amount of water. And this is because the roots are able to grow really deep into the soil and have access to a larger um, supply of water. So to support this, um, farmers only really need to water this crop during dry periods um, because typical rain patterns provide enough water to, for, for the, the, the crop to grow properly. It takes around five gallons of water to produce around one ounce of peanuts. And uh, when we compare this to similar products like uh, almonds, for example, it actually takes 80 gallons of water to produce the same amount. So we see that it's 16 times less uh, water that's needed to produce a similar product like peanuts. In addition to all of this, um, all parts of the peanut and uh, uh, the peanut crop is able to be used um, at one point or another. So of course the peanuts are used for us to eat um, and discarded vines are returned to the soil so that when it breaks down, it enriches the soil. Um, some of these vines alongside those leftover skins from the peanut butter making process are used in making animal feed. The heart of the peanut kernel makes peanut oil, and peanut oil, as well as pelletized shells, can be used to make biofuels. So really nothing goes to waste when farmers are growing this crop. In terms of the nutritional value of peanut butter, as we can see, peanut butter is energy dense and also high in fats, specifically heart healthy mono and polyunsaturated fats. And these are known as heart healthy because they've been found to decrease the risk of heart disease. No matter whether you're uh, eating a natural or a processed peanut butter, there is a small amount of saturated fat um, with a more processed peanut butter having a higher amount. Peanut butter is a really good source of plant-based protein with at least seven grams per serving, depending on the type. And peanut butter is a really great source of vitamins and minerals. Um, I just want to note that no matter whether you're eating a natural or a processed peanut butter, both products really do provide those great nutritional benefits. Uh, speaking of other nutrition, or other benefits in general, um, as long as you're not allergic to peanuts, peanut butter can really benefit you in a variety of ways. So we talked about the nutritional benefits, we talked about the environmental benefits and how peanuts um, are a very sustainable crop.
And I want to highlight some of the financial benefits as well. So peanut butter especially is very affordable with a kilogram jar costing under $5 on average. Um, and this cost is at least double with similar products like almond butter. Peanut butter is also very versatile, so you can use it in a variety of recipes, sweet or savory, without breaking the bank. Um, peanut butter is also shelf stable, so you can open a jar and not have to worry about it going bad uh, shortly after and having to buy a new one. I also wanted to take this opportunity to talk about some of the benefits that peanut butter can have on uh, the food security status of Canada and um, other countries around the world. So since peanut butter has so many nutritional, environmental, and financial benefits, it really does make the perfect item for food banks. Its nutritional benefits alone um, make it a really great choice for individuals and families in need, but providing such uh, a nutrient and energy dense product. Peanut butter does run out um, very quickly from these food banks. So if you do have an extra jar lying around, I really do encourage you to put it to good use and donate it to your local food bank. So we've talked about all of that background information. Now let's get into the recipe demo for the peanut butter energy balls. So here is some of the equipment that you'll need and let's get started so this whole recipe takes around 45 minutes to make 15 minutes to prepare and uh, roll the energy balls and 30 minutes in the fridge so we'll start by adding one cup of quick oats or other oats to a mixing bowl we'll add a quarter cup as well i use semi-sweet uh, chocolate chips then we'll add two-thirds of a cup of uh, peanut butter. And as you might notice, I actually used the remainder of my peanut butter for this recipe. And a great thing that you can do with this leftover jar is make some overnight oats so that you use every last drop of that peanut butter. And you can see um, examples of this in the Nutrition with Context Overnight Oats uh, presentation on the Perform Center webinars page. After you're done with that, you'll add one and a half tablespoons of honey, and then you'll want to mix everything very, very well. Make sure everything is incorporated um, so that it's an easy process when rolling the energy balls. When that's all set and mixed, we'll cover that with some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator to set for 30 minutes. Then, of course, we'll uncover, and this step is optional. I decided to add some cinnamon to a plate so that once I took my tablespoon portion of the mixture, rolled it into my energy ball, I could then roll it in the cinnamon powder um, so for just some extra flavor. So like I said, you can omit this step entirely, or you can use other products like cocoa powder. You can roll it in... Um, coconut flakes, you can roll it in seeds like chia seeds, flax seeds, um, even sesame seeds. Uh, you can roll it in even just some oats with some more chocolate chips. The options are really endless. Have fun with it and uh, bon appetit. There you have your energy balls. So this whole recipe makes about 20 peanut butter energy balls with two balls a serving, making 10 servings in total. The energy bar balls store, store really well in the fridge for around a week, and you can store them in the freezer for months at a time. I do recognize that some people do have peanut allergies, so whether it's you or someone you know who wants to make a recipe similar to this um, but not use peanut butter, here are some substitutions. So you can use soy butter made from roasted soybeans, you can make almond butter made from almonds, tahini made from sesame seeds, and uh, sun butter made from sunflower seeds. So there's other varieties as well, but these will at least get you started. So to end off this presentation, I'll just discuss what else we can do with peanut butter. Of course, you can make the classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You can make overnight oats, um, like I suggested in the recipe demo. You can add peanut butter to a smoothie. You can even make your smoothie into a smoothie bowl to make um, a larger snack or a meal out of it. You can add peanut butter to a sauce for stir fry. You can, add it, make it, uh, make, you can make a dipping sauce. You can add it to desserts. Really, the options are endless. As I mentioned, peanut butter Butter is super versatile. So with that, I have some references if you are looking for some more information. Um, but I just wanted to end off by thanking you for your attention today. I hope you learned a lot about peanut butter and are inspired to make those peanut butter energy balls for yourself. So thank you so much again and take care.